Well, cheers and how do you do, Buckaroos? As the alarm strength is playing on Beer Whisper Radio. Hey, I'm working through this smash pack from uh, Schlafly. Now, so far I've tried uh, the uh, Centennial and the Denali. And now I'm trying the Amarillo, which I got to admit of the four hops is my personal favorite hop. I love the Amarillo. But anyway, uh, they're all 6.5%, 45 IBU golden ales, the only malt or grain bill being a two-row malted barley. So you've got that clean malt, so it's really showcasing the hops. Anyway, I do like this too, no. Beautiful notes of orange, melon, and peach. Yeah, I guess it does. Uh, I, I personally always get a whole lot of ores and tangerine notes, but yeah, they say melon peach. Okay, what the hell? Create a distinct aroma, lush with fresh fruit uh, aromatics. Yeah, that's what I like about the Amarillo. It, it does make a very. I, several years ago, I did something odd. I did a, I did my version of a Dunkelweiss, uh, but I, I used the Amarillo hop in it. So it was a little bit different. I liked it. Uh, the bouquet of this hop is unmistakable. So there you go. So they tell you to look for uh, notes of orange, melon, peach. Show you that bottle again. Either my one of the little glass here. I've got another one of these glasses. It's it's actually a, a mother's glass. I guess it's in the house. But this is the same shape, uh, but just no logo on it. Oh, yeah. This is very aromatic. It's funny. I had the, I've had the, the, the Denali uh, I drank uh, the other day. I thought, man, you know, th this beer on its own, as, as just a simple smash beer, I would buy a six-pack of it. It was just that good. Or, you know, tweak up the – leave it as a single hot beer – and just, you know, make a slightly more complex a grain bill, and damn. I'd like to see beers getting back to, you know, three, four, five ingredients. Uh, I mean, you know, other than the you know, stuff that you have to have to make beer, but keeping the malts and the hops rather simple. Instead of using ten hops, use one, maybe two. You know, keep the grain bill rather simple as well. You know, you don't have to do some crazy shit to make a fine beer. So a lot of orange on the nose, as I, I typically get from this beer. It's also very, uh, I'm getting floral notes as well. The orange blossom, possibly some, some uh, I feel like I'm getting some lavender, actually. Honeysuckle. They tell you to look for melon and peach. Yeah, you do. You do get a little bit of uh, a peach note. Uh, melon. I'm gonna tell you, say I, I feel melon in, in the form of, of like a honeydew more than so a watermelon cantaloupe. Uh, very clean. I just I just love the single malt, single hop concept. I gotta tell you. If more people put single, more breweries put single malt, single hop beers, smash beers in six packs rather than as, as an occasional novelty, I, I'd buy it, man. Or I'd like to see at least more smash 12 packs like Schlafly does. Because I love the beers, man. I just I love the simplicity. I love, I love the clean feel that they have. I think the problem is we're getting into... For me, anyway, there's so many craft beers that are just becoming too muddled. Too many flavors going on, and a lot of them really aren't complementary to the other. I think if you were to ask the best chefs in the world, they might be able to make a 100-ingredient dish. And there may be a few they enjoy doing, but I bet if you asked every one of them uh, what their favorite thing to make, I bet it's going to be something simplistic. Something that only takes a small handful of ingredients. And I think so many craft breweries go about it the wrong way is that they, they get out there trying to do nothing but trendy beers, you know, uh, novelty beers, in, instead of, you know, making a, a, a classic style. You know, learn how to make a, a Pilsner or even a Hellas first. Learn how to, you know, do a classic English mild 
or an English bitter. I mean, you know, if you can't do classic styles, I don't really want to touch your big stuff. <laughs> anyway, that's my feel about it. But I'm kind of, a, you know, just this my nature anyway. I don't like complication. I like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple guy with simple taste. I'm, I just want stuff done right. It doesn't, I don't necessarily like things or need things to be complicated. I just want something good done right. So there, how about that? I just want it good done correct, okay? Anyway, I digress. Uh, now I got some motorhead going. I got to turn it up a little bit. I hope I don't bless anybody. Else. See, my, my nature wants me to crank this baby to 10. So you can't hear me just the uh, overkill, but in fact, I will just for a second. I can get up to it. Okay. Now I'll turn it down so I can talk over a little bit. Uh, I, I've got a, this song. I couldn't listen to this song for a while. It was one of my son Seamus' favorite tunes. Uh, we lost Seamus to cancer in, in 2013. And as you know, I would listen to uh, uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid and Motorhead Overkill, I start crying and I start laughing because I got to be the only person in the world that cries listening to those songs. But anyway, my son, see, I grew up with this music, right? And my son Seamus found a lot of this stuff through video games. So he would play his video games and and then he'd be, you know, doing this while he's playing. This was on uh, SISX3, I believe. But it was one of his favorite tunes. I really loved this song. So, at least now, like I still get a little sad and melancholy, but I can smile when I hear it. So. I just think of him, you know, head banging to certain tunes. It's funny. There's a lot of music that I've forgotten about, you know, or you know, just hadn't revisited in a lot of years. And he'd have the video games. He'd be listening to stuff, and all of a sudden, I, I mean, him and I would go back to uh, uh, record stores and. and uh, you know, he'd be looking for, uh, you know, Motorhead or, uh, you know, New York Dolls, that kind of stuff. So it was, it was fun. Anyway, now I'm going to get sad if I talk about it too much. So I'm going to move right the hell along. Uh, yeah, I, I do feel a lot of orange. Uh, again, I, I tend to get tangerine, even though they don't mention it. Uh, it's, it's a subtle distinction, but there is a distinction. I do feel a lot of those, those peach notes and, and, and the melon, but but I always feel it in that order, right? I get the orange, peach, and melon. You know, it, it's in that order that, that I find them. And, and I get that dry clean. I, I get I get a lot of orange in the finish, but I'm also feeling herbal notes as well. So I just love the Amarillo hop. Uh, very, you know, first it was underused, and then it became overused, and now it's kind of back to being underused again. But I just think it's a brilliant hop that gives you a lot of flavors you want. It gives you a lot of the flavors that are trendy without being that trendy hop. And I've, I've talked to several small craft breweries, and it, it's, it's difficult for them to buy certain varieties of hops because the larger breweries, uh, even the larger craft breweries, are, are buying them in, in such quantities that in you know making the prices rise that it's hard for a lot of these smaller breweries to use you know the citra mosaic uh, galaxy kind of hops but amarillo gives you a lot of those flavors that those other hops possess without necessarily being a trendy hop so there you go oh i apologize i've been having issues with my threads lately Oh, it's very nice. Yeah, I've, I've been pretty impressed. Like I said, I had the Centennial first, the Valley, and now the Amarillo. No, I just have the Cascade to go. So there you go. I am. Who are you? Who cares? I am Don Vera Spur, your evangelist, political beer drinker, purr, very wisdom man. All around good guys, overkill is. Yeah, baby. That's what daddy likes. 